Right, are we actually doing something now? Are you working? Yeah, seems so. Yeah, finally. Sorry about that, everyone. The technical glitches in this household are just forever. Um, I don't know exactly if this is going to be a... I know it's only something that's temporary at the moment between uh, waiting for the coronavirus situation to settle down and also uh, for me to get back into university to start work again on my Wildlife and Mars animation short. Um, but in the meantime, I thought I might do some caricature drawings. Um, these were going to be um, capture cards uh, for a professional stream. But unfortunately, it seems like uh, OBS Studio does not want to function for me properly. So I'm just going to have to focus in on uh, the three sketches that I designed earlier uh, last week. So these are all based on my um, 2016 entry for the Harryhausen, uh, hashtag Harryhausen100 uh, logo contest in 2016, as I said. Um, so focusing on Guanji, Talos, and the Ema in this stage tutorial uh, slash demo, if you want to call it anything of those. Uh, I'm going to be focusing on Guanji. So, as I mentioned before, these are sketches that I made early in the week. Normally, these things take me a couple flowers to figure out certain things about them so sometimes the postures sometimes the type of detail that's going to them sometimes it's the way that the uh, the character is interacting with other elements in the picture and this is actually based off a illustration that has always kind of like stuck with me since i was a kid uh, from the jurassic park making of book um so i didn't want to copy this image directly so i made sure that it was still sticking in with the guanji theme while still giving hints to the original source material so what i've ended up doing is oops there we go so what i've ended up doing is i've taken a copy of this particular image because it's too small for my liking and i wanted it to make sure it filled up a nice big sheet of a4 so i've taken a photocopy and the outline of the um of the caricature first and then it gives me a chance to play around with certain things so maybe change the posture slightly uh, move one of the legs in and out so it gives a bit more depth and perception maybe stretch the tail out a little bit uh, but it'll also give me uh, more options to play around with on the um, on the table as well so what i'll do is i'll start out with a thick graphite pen first and this should give me everything that i need um now if i start struggling what i probably will end up doing is i'll end up putting my phone underneath this and unfortunately i've never been able to afford a light box so it's always been a question of just utilizing things around me I have to use it actually because I can't quite see underneath. There we go, that's better. So I know you won't be able to see that much, but it comes up quite nicely for me on my side. What's that jawline doing there? Now? now, this is a technique that I think everyone who's starting to learn to draw should be quite comfortable with doing. Uh, I don't have any issues with drawing and then tracing what you draw, or even just tracing directly off a uh, an image that you really like as long as you don't pass that image off as your own. Um, I learned quite a fair bit of drawing skills from tracing originally, and it kind of taught my brain how to form shapes. But I know a lot of people also tend to panic about tracing. They say it's cheating or 
that it's uh, it's not allowing you to actually create your own ideas, which to a certain extent is true. But if you use it as a teaching tool rather than as a way of creating art, then it can actually be quite beneficial. Now, I wasn't really happy with these hands to begin with, so I'll probably be changing those uh, later on. But for now, I'll just get them in there so it kind of like completes the image. I'm sorry that there's also no music as well. In the last stream that I tried to do uh, music, it was too muffled in the background. And unfortunately, my laptop is not powerful enough to run it via the same laptop that I'm streaming from. So unfortunately, you just have to make do with my not so sexy voice, unfortunately. Let's see, uh, so that comes down there. I'll sweep my brow up there. not quite made up my mind on how I want to do the eyes. I don't know whether I'm going to um, fill them in properly and then use a rubber to erase that particular part of the eye out or whether I'm going to leave them drawn in. But I'm hoping the further along this gets, the more it should start. Because at the end of the day, this is a caricature, so it's not going to be a complete carbon copy of Guanji's design. But I do want it to have some close similarities to it. This is one thing I definitely want to change. It's the hands. So uh, let's see. Let's start this one coming up here. This one's slightly longer. And then this one curling round.
more or less the same for this one. That's that one done. Now, when I originally drew this, I did it so that it looked like he'd been perched in one position, but I think this time what I want to do is I want to stretch out slightly and then have this perched leg as the real leg. So before I do the front, Let's see if I can get this right, uh, about there I think should be right, so it comes down here, so that leg needs to swing out here, Just about make up for there we go. Where's that all gone? It is down there. Okay. So the tail, because it swings back up here, don't need to worry too much about that rear leg now. To reposition. So get that knee coming in here. How far did I have that? Yeah, so I had that coming down a bit further down, so that was coming down there. And So what I want to do is see if I get it right. So I bring this one up front. So what I need to do, now that I've got that in position, is I need to bring this knee up. So that's, uh, let's see, it just needs to go about there, I think. I can always reposition this so it's not like it's... Uh, do a die situation. Okay, so then that needs to stretch out here, that needs to go a bit. That goes there. Right, okay. So, um, get the underbelly. Take out that claw. Yeah. 
Hey, Jack, how are we doing? Well, I've got the um, this YouTube studio version working. I've not actually got the uh, Streamlabs working, unfortunately. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the settings or the the, the Wi-Fi around here is just not working properly, but it's it's not connected, fortunately. So I'm just doing it the uh, the old-fashioned way, which is a shame, really, because I had quite a few reference photos that I was quite happy to uh, share with people that I got from the uh, Harry Housen and Me exhibition uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, it would have been quite interesting to see what people thought of the Guanji model up close, but never mind. Let's just swing this tail round. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking is. I mean, Adlington in itself is quite a small village, so I can imagine that as the moment that everyone starts using their home broadband, it just all goes to pot. <laughs> but never mind. I'll sort you through. Now, one thing... I do want to do, because that leg now doesn't look right going back as far as it does. I think what I'm going to do with this rear leg is just position it slightly further back and then have the uh, the, uh, the shin sort of like jump up here. Let's see how that looks. Uh, Uh, well, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, Just around here. This is actually coming up at the moment, so let's do a quick scan. Yeah, it's getting there. I know the photocopy is much better. <laughs> I can't help that, unfortunately. But hopefully, as the drawing gets further in, things will start picking up a little bit. Right, okay, so. is famous for he's got quite stocky legs he's not a uh, a thin-legged theropod that's for sure all right so let's start thickening these lines out So a little interesting bit of trivia uh, for those of you who aren't overly familiar with um, Guanji. Um, when Ray was making the uh, Valley Guanji uh, project, he, I don't know if it's a question of he, he didn't have time to do it or whether that he didn't have the, uh, the facilities to do it, but he, asked the National History Museum's uh, Arthur Howard in London to sculpt both the dinosaurs in One Million Years BC and Guanji. And the funny thing is, is that um, 
Arthur Howard had the, um, I don't know if it, if the right word to use is the nerve or the cheek, but he basically took Ray's designs and called them his own. And, uh, and what he ended up doing was incorporating those designs into quite a lot of uh, models and figures. And one of those figures is the Invicta Plastics Natural History Museum dinosaur collection that was around in the 70s until I think it was about the late 80s. And if you actually study their uh, structure, you can actually see traits of uh, raised designs. In them. And like I say, I don't know if they were kind of like he was uh, cheeky enough to actually just take those designs and call them his own or whether. Uh, Incorporate them in. Now, that's one thing I do need to check. I can turn to my reference for a moment because I don't know if he's actually got those scales on the lips all the way. Yeah, I was contemplating about the whole age restriction thing because at the same time, it's like I, I want to be able to monetize my videos eventually, because at the moment, I'm, I still need to get about 500 subscribers and about 4,000 hours worth of YouTube watch time in order to actually become monetized. But then at the same time, I don't want to start shooting out to kids and then neglect them later down the line when I can monetize. So it's like I'm, I'm dicing with a double-edged sword, really, and I can't really get around it. Uh... Right, okay, so looking at my reference, it kind of dissipates. Oh, that's so I'll abandon that version. There we go. And just have that as a piece coming in like so. It's always good to check your references. Don't just assume you know it all. I was actually quite annoyed when I um, was looking into monetization ages X amount of subscribers and that's all I've been aiming for is the subscribers but now when I've looked into it they're saying that you need to have um, so many watch hours on, on your videos which I can kind of understand but at the same time it's like you know 4,000 hours that's a lot to ask a lot from people and I don't even know if as I'm live streaming whether people are able to donate anything because of that as well i can imagine that the, unless you get the monetization you're not even able to accept tips which is annoying and it's not like i can just tip myself to, <laughs> to test that theory out either um, let's look at my <coughs> trying not to knock the camera light uh where's the model one Reference model. Right. So, I'm just going to have to readjust everything for a second. There we go. Right. Yeah, I might give that a shot. It's a, it's a shame because I don't have the confidence to talk about stuff on my own I sometimes get stumped for things to talk about at least when I'm live streaming if, any, if I see one's comment I can kind of like respond to it um, but what I might try and do is is do um, a recording um, with someone talking either through discord or skype or something so at least I'm how to draw all sculpts or something at the same time especially if it's kind of like on subject topics like Harry House and dinosaurs and vice versa um, I'll get the hang of it eventually. It's just, it's all new areas for me, really. Just getting used to it all. Here's a feature that I didn't notice before. It kind of sweeps around and comes back to the ear. 
And now there's some bit more in flames. I might actually pronounce that a bit more there. And Oh God! So it's, it, 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 to be honest with you, mate, it's like I'm screwed either way. It's either I I ad lib and, and stumble on what to say, or I try and read what I'm like a uh, bullet point for the day. And being dyslexic, trying to read even what I wrote sometimes is a bloody pain in the ass. It's like I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. <laughs> right? Okay. So I think this is starting to take a bit more shape now. So the tricky bit when it comes around to this um, particular caricature is doing the tail because um, Arthur Howard had like this um, scale design and I'm pretty sure that was in Ray's original drawings as well. It's like a, 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 a tiered, um, oh, which which lizard is it now? I think it's either a uh, like a type of gecko or um, might even be a salamander. I'm not 100% sure now. I can't have to look back at my references at some point. But, uh, but yeah, it was like... Um, You've, you've got this, this as it's going down, each segment gets smaller and smaller. It gives that scaled lizard look. In fact, yeah, that's right. Bring that to what? Well, there we go. Cheers. It's, uh, I'm actually really pleased with it. In fact, if anything, so far, I actually prefer. The photocopy they can actually clean up properly and then do the uh digital painting in, uh, to highlight all the colors because what i found is especially with premiere and uh, not premiere sorry uh, photoshop and i basically watercolored all the the uh the colors in and i think it actually works much better than if i'd used pencil crane or mark pens or anything like that but we'll see. I mean, considering that originally these were supposed to be like the cue cards for me, uh, gone to lunch, be right back, and what have you. Um, I don't know if that's going to be the case with the uh, streaming system, but I'll figure it out eventually. I mean, especially if it's like people like yourself that are kind of like helping me try and figure it out. Because the, the way I learn as, as someone that I'm pretty suspected of being autistic, but I, hadn't, I still need to have the tests and everything done. But knowing what I know about myself and the about how autistic um, individuals are, are taught, I actually learn from doing and being shown rather than just, you know, someone just throwing a textbook in front of my face and saying, right, read this and within a week you'll know what to do. Um, especially considering that every situation, especially for live streaming, everyone's different. Everyone has a different outcome. All these videos that you see online about, oh, this is the best settings for your channel for doing this and uh, you need to make sure you've got that setting or this setting. It's all personal circumstances. Like it might, that same situation might not repeat for everybody else. So to say that this is the the be all and end all of uh, techniques to do, it's a little bit misleading, especially for someone that takes things that people say at face value. So if someone says this is going to work, you will assume, especially myself that things do work and if they don't work then you start questioning well is it me that have i done something wrong is it the fact that my computer's broke is it that uh, i've not got the right software and it might just be something as simple as just the wi-fi is not strong enough that's it right hmm uh, and that's why I was thinking on the, the way you were showing me with your setup, it seemed to work on the get-go. And I don't know whether it was because my laptop had crashed that it stopped working or whether it was um, that the settings had reset. I just don't know. But after that point, nothing was, was operating the same. So I'm hoping that it's a case that the settings have just reset because I wasn't making notes or anything when you were uh, telling me your setup. So it's not like I can just say, ah, right, well, that's changed. I'll just go back and uh, change this. Right, now, um, one thing I haven't done on those legs is um, this piece on the side. 
Yeah, so that wants to go like that. And then you want to go like that. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Just pop that down for a bit. It could have been. But we won't know until we try. Right, okay, so uh, I've got the more or less the overall shape now. Uh, just get that other muscle in. Now, what I want to try and do is start detailing, and this is definitely where I'm going to need the reference. Unfortunately, Guanja is not a simple. Uh, few spots and a go. Um, he's got quite specific scales that only he has. Even the Allosaur and the Ceratosaur don't have the, his particular design. So I'm going to start with a head first. I really want to kind of like emphasize the bumps and scale textures. Now I don't want to do, go too crazy with it i just want it to be enough to kind of make the image pop but subtle enough that as a caricature it's not going into the high level details of uh, what you would expect for a, a um, art piece yeah that needs to be a bit more pronounced there we go So depending on how far I get with this, what I might do is go in with it with a a finer pencil and just slowly work my way down, erasing areas that I'm not happy with, going in with a final pencil just to kind of like neaten the whole thing up. And then uh, stick in the shading. So that's one thing I did find work in my favor was the shading was already on the drawer and I wasn't having to shade too much with the paints. Uh, let me taper off slightly. There we go. I'll sharpen the pencil up again. Get that nice point. And I will recommend to people, if you can, try and find pencils like this. This is a, uh, it's basically a full-on graphite pen. Uh, Slater's design, if you really want to draw with one of these, then it's a, the lead breaks all the time with this. It's, it's a pretty solid piece of graphite, and it feels quite comfortable in the hand as well. So if you can, I definitely recommend trying to get hold of some Um you can get them from specialists like Ryman's and what have you, but if you're really lucky on some occasion, you can get them from the cheap shops as well, and they work just as well. Yeah, I'm just like generic T-Rex number three or something, um, kind of like a cross between um, the T-Rex in Jurassic Park and just like a retro-ish sort of uh, dinosaur. And... By the time I got to finishing the overall shape, I thought, you know what, I need to tie this into my Harryhausen logo because if I'm going to live stream this stuff and do it sort of like a um, a way of carrying on this celebration of Ray's 100th, it makes sense to do these sort of things, but I didn't want to just do random bits. I wanted them to be a, a connection, a tie-in somehow, and doing Guanji and Talos and the Emu, I thought was quite novel. Um, but I'm actually happy with really happy with how it's actually turning out um in terms of its design it's like and it doesn't take much as well it if anything it, i know this is going to sound hard to describe but it's recognizing where the the flows and form go so that each you know for example each of these ripples on the neck only guanji has that sort of setup in the neck and it's quite identifiable to that specific um a dinosaur uh, design 
the Allosaurus doesn't have it. The Ceratosaur has a, a bit of it, but it's quite a thin, slender neck, whereas one is quite a thick, meaty neck. And again, if you carry that design over to, say, the T-Rex in um, the original King Kong, it's quite a thick neck, but it doesn't have this layering set up. And it's the same with um, anything from Jurassic Park era. It's quite a thin, cylindrical neck. It's not a, 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 a rounded, chunky uh, flesh with rolling layers of muscle and fat going into each other. Now, he does have scales on his head, but I can't tell from this image because the photo that I've got with the face is directly above. So if you've got, say, like the, the, the face of the character like this, it was a terrible setup. Here we go. Yeah. So you've got the face of the character like this. I've got photos where you can actually see the actual top of the head, whereas the photo reference I've got is pretty much from the uh, from the side onwards. So I'm hoping that I can just make it up as I go along at this point. I need to darken this up actually, because he's actually got quite, um, quite deep set eyes, which again is another staple for Guanji. In some ways, he's almost got like um, um, oh, which version of Godzilla is it now? I think it's the Heisei era. It's quite sunken eyes. All right. Hey, Oscar, how are we doing? Oh, favourite Harryhausen dino. Um, honestly, it's got to be the Styracosaurus from Guanji. I've always liked Styracosaurus, even as a kid. I, although Triceratops was always prevalent in all the films that I ever watched, it just never really did anything for me but when you see styracosaur especially with the horns around the frill i just love that I, and i've always had a thing for ceratopsins with the with the central nose horn it's like you look at triceratops and it's quite this dinky little thing but then you get to something like ceratosaur and um and not ceratosaur sorry um centrosaur and um, styracosaurus with the central nose horn it's just like yeah that's that's where the meat's at you know if that thing's going to lunge at you it's going to cause some damage <laughs> Ah, cheers, Oscar. Um, I'm, I'm hoping it might develop into something. I'm not really sure because the initial idea behind these is that there were going to be um, cue cards for when, when I was live streaming so that rather than just use generic B right backs and what have you, they would be tailored. So this was going to be gone to lunch. So I could literally put this up and people would know that I'm absent because I didn't want to disconnect the stream but I wouldn't have been going away for like anything more than 30 minutes or something like that. Um, but with my internet connection is not exactly great. So I don't know what's going to happen with these afterwards, but no, I'm hoping something will. I'm not going to discount them, but at the same time, I don't want to uh, invest too much into it to then find out that the, uh, the initial idea is just going to go south, but we'll see. Now, is, this is where it gets fun now because you really need to emphasize that lower lip as being the end just to kind of give mouth a bit more depth. Um, what I found uh, growing up is whenever I was drawing any kind of like closed lips creature, whether it be dinosaur, dragon, or anything like that. If the lips didn't have this dark line going through the middle, it kind of made the face look flat. Whereas when you have it in there, it kind of makes it pop out a bit more. I mean, with going on with the coronavirus as well, there's um, 
there's a a part of me that really wants to do like a art attack live stream sort of thing to so do a bit of uh paper mache dinosaur sculptures that sort of thing but i'm just not 100 sure on it yet it's like the the ideas are there but it's having the um what's the word the um oh, the word will come to me <laughs> Confidence, there we go. The, having the confidence to do it because I'm not the most confident person. I mean, I'm confident with the things that I do, but it's not confident in terms of like I get joy out of it, but does anybody else me over the years? Ah, cheers, mate. I don't know, I'm not necessarily aiming at, at you two specifically, but I, if anyone wants to see if they can donate anything, just to see whether it actually works or not, I, I don't think it will personally. I think you have to be monetized in order for it to work. But if you want to give it a try, but not necessarily go through with the whole thing, then be free to, to give it a shot and uh, just let me know. Because it's the only problem when you're live uh, as when you're on the other side of live streaming is that you, you can't just test it out. I mean, not that of course I'm begging or anything like that. <laughs> I'm not beneath begging, but at the same time, I, I just don't know how to ask. <laughs> it's always been one of my uh, shortcomings. Right, okay, you know what I'm going to do? Um, where's my scalpel? Also, nice little handy tip. If you're over the age of 18, get yourself one of these. It's a retractable scalpel. So whenever I want to get really fine edges with my rubbers, I just slice away the chunkiest parts until I get a really, really fine point. And in some ways, it's kind of a bit of a waste of a rubber because you've got all that material that's been um, but nice, sharp edge and a narrow edge if you're really lucky. And if it's a really good rubber, uh, you can keep that tip for quite some time before it starts going blunt. And I have tried using putty rubbers in the past but they annoy the absolute crap out of me i don't understand how people can use putty rubbers because whenever i use them you stick it on you start rubbing and all that happens is the tip just then rolls around in the air and it just makes more of a mess than it actually did in the first place right so what i'm gonna do is i just take that out then let's see so to really darken that pupil up get the edge looking sharp and this Shade the rest of the eye in. Darken up around these edges. And then, ooh, Sinbad film. It has to be the Seventh Voyage. And for only two reasons. One, it was the very first with the fantasy genre. So beforehand, uh, because these sort of films normally took 
more than at least maybe about 30 minutes or more to get into the actual um, fantastical side of the story. I used to just bore to tears. It's like I, I remember watching, I think it was the Baghdad and being absolutely bored to tears because it was took so long to get to things characters like the genie and the, uh, the the steel guardians in the desert and things like that. And it, it was just like, how how is this entertaining to people? But yet with Sinbad Seventh Voyage. You literally, I think in the space of like 10 minutes or less, it's like you go from being on a ship, being on an island, and then get confronted by a cyclops. And it was just like, this isn't even a guy in a suit. This is like beyond. It, it's like it just blew my mind. It really blew my mind. So like I recognize it wasn't um, a guy in a suit. CG wasn't even a thing back then. So I, I knew it wasn't real, but the department was like, no, this is real. It looks tactile. It looks like it's part of the real world. And then it wasn't until, like, I think it was 2002. Um, yeah, I discovered stop motion. Then it was like, ah, this is what it is. This is what I can do. Because up until that point, it was like, I wanted to be a comic book designer. I wanted to be a, a, a graphic novelist. Um, I, I wanted to be um, everything that was involving the cartoons and drawings, but I didn't want to do cartoons and drawings. I wanted to be creating stories and adventures and so forth. And yeah, it's just like stop motion was, it just gave me all of that. So it's not quite dark enough. It needs to be a little bit dark. There we go. Perfect. It's not too bad. I might go in with a fine rubber again at some point, but not right now. Oh, tell me about it, mate. It's like, um, I, I, I don't know if you want to get other people involved with it, Jack, but I would be more than happy to get other people from, uh, from the, yeah, involved. It's like, I could imagine, even if it was just a case of like, people just came on for the favorite films or something like that i'd be quite happy to do that and to be honest with you it's it'd be a nice refreshing change to be actually able to talk to people about the films and and ray and what have you rather than just be me and the usual crowd and plus it might actually give me a chance to exercise some of my trivia as well so i'm like did you know <laughs> not that i want to be an it all or anything but at the same time it's like you have all this wealth of knowledge you, you want to be able to share around because it's like i know stuff about the original jurassic park trilogy and star wars original trilogy and such but after a time especially when the fan base has grown as much as it has now it's like i feel that my knowledge base has somewhat been um pushed aside especially now that it's all mostly like computers and what have you and even then the the resources that i used to be able to get access to to know about this sort of stuff uh, either few and far between now or it's just completely swamped by people already so wherever you spout out people either then query you too soon or it's like yeah I know that I read it on the same place and it just takes the, the fun out of it whereas it's something that not only that I've grown up with um, but it's stuff that I've looked into that you know who else knows how the original King Kong was made apart from it was stop motion not many people know all the ins and outs and even then the people that do again they're not within these sort of communities they're all kind of like hidden away in in the various uh caves and uh and and um, shrines i mean i've got randall william cook on my friends list and i would love to um to quiz him about his time with ray and just kind of like learn the things that he told him that he never told me or the, the things that he found out from Ray. And, you know, just those sort of stories are, are the things that kind of like make me wish that the time that I had with him and the, the phone calls that I had with him, I wish I'd, I had the guts to, to ask or to be on longer or not feel conscious, but because of society's kind of like pressure on me at the time to get a normal job get a, a paycheck 
um give up on animation because it was just kind of like a, a, it wasn't a job it was a, a hobby it, it just pushed this mindset on me and i i hate myself for that i absolutely do and it's time i can never get back again and i wish i could it's like i miss him so much i mean it's things like this that I, I would love to know what you would think of this i would i would like to think he'd love it but then there's a part of me that's like nah, but would he <laughs> Would he quiz me about it? <laughs> oh, no, I like the little boy, Genie. I think he's quite good. I mean, yeah, he's a bit wooden, but he's still pretty good for what he is. I mean, compared to, like, other Genie personas that you get, it's like, yeah, he's, he's miles better, I think. I think he's... Um, still around actually I, I remember someone posting that they had a chat with him oh damn that would be cool i'm thinking we set aside an entire day to watch like three or four in a row oh god yeah three or four in a row i'll be up for that and split the commentaries into separate videos and um, awesome that's what i like to see uh, it's not being pushed aside uh, uh i would love to get involved like massively but i'm afraid committed to a few creative projects with a close friend don't hate yourself man things happen i know but still it's like you, you can't help but have regrets about stuff i mean i, I don't regret the events and, and how they happened what i regret is i listened to the wrong people to let it happen that's the thing that bugs me the most it's like the job center i kid you not they just want to pigeonhole you into any category as long as it just gets you out of their system that's all they care about the the day that i was told by this girl on on the uh, other side of the desk that animation is not a career it's a hobby it absolutely made my blood boil because i think you know how many kids in school do football as a hobby and then how many progress on to actually doing that as a career I mean, it's not a great deal, but you don't see people whinging at them saying, oh, football's just a hobby, it's not a career, and yet look what they get. But yeah, animation is everywhere. It's in your adverts, it's in your animation uh, cartoon channel sort of stuff, it's in your adult content stuff, it's in your cinemas, it's in your TV programs. It's not, it's just a small niche thing that nobody is going to see. It's like everyone will see it. I hate that it gets sidelined like it's a, a bad penny. Let's just bring these out a bit more. Right. And I'm going to try and get this right. Now, the thing that I learned from when I did the um, Harry Hasen 100 logo is that the scales that um, Arthur Howard pressed into Guanji were basically a a series of circles but he polarized them in such a way that you you had like a collection of small ones that would develop into big ones and then go back and small ones again so it kind of like this flow pattern to it um but he would also tend to use them so that say in the torso where it was majority of larger circles but it was circulated with smaller ones but on the neck it was mostly smaller ones with the odd large one in place so hopefully i can get that looking all right it's just i mean at this point it's, you can mess around with this and then play around later on if you wanted to um again it's caricature it doesn't need to be spot on but what am i gonna say i'm a perfectionist <laughs> oh and his um scales on his throat was another one i need to figure out um so his um would come up to here and that is going to be shaded and then that comes down there, that goes down there, that goes down there, and then it goes back up again. So again, just tweak those around. Let's bring that one a bit further up. Where's my rubber gun? My kingdom for a rubber. Oh, and pro tip for anyone, if you want to clean your rubbers as well, jeans. If you're wearing jeans, just rub your rubber across your jeans. 
not only does it take the uh, lead off, but it also gives it a nice uh, rounded finish as well. Works a treat. Or carpet, if you have a carpet, use your carpet. But make sure it's not a cream carpet, otherwise you end up with um, very obvious lines in your carpet. As I learned um, from my last rented accommodation. <laughs> Luckily I could get the um, carpet cleaner out and give it a really good scrub. But geez, did it bloody take some scrubbing. Okay, so we want to bulge that out there. I need to do another one down here. Let's go up there. Let's go up there. There we go. It's not shaded down there. I just catch up. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I would love to get involved. I don't want to uh, I would love this and it's like a thing on that one. I, I, people would do. I mean, I would love to have known what you thought about the um, the logo that I did back in 2016 because I, I put so much thought and love into that. It's like when I originally came out with it, I was thinking. No, what what would Ray want? Ray would want something that's going to be personal. Things like you know, the the little things that it's a bit of trivia that the fan base would know, or maybe close friends were selecting through the the logos that they that they just honed in on mine. It's like it was twenty twelve all over again with my storyboard for the um, logo com uh, the uh, storyboard contest. It's like everyone was submitting. All sorts of crazy things in terms of the, the I think the the summary brief was um, you have to make a monster in a two or three minute film. Now the word monster can be interpreted by many things, and I literally mean many things. And I shall give you some examples of what people were submitting. Uh, the simplest one was you know generic monster troll type creature in a cave that would come out and do some damage or do some good that's one thing um another person submitted um money problems being the monster so a person would give a bag of money over to somebody and they would uh, take that money away and then they were bankrupt so the, the, yeah there's a monster in there i suppose um and then the the weirdest one that I came across was a uh, well, no, there was two weird ones actually. To tell a lie, the, there was a little girl that transformed into a larger version of a little girl, ate her father, and then shrunk back down again. And the other one was you you were kind of like in this red river, and then these cylindrical devices would. Uh, come uh, come flowing through, followed by purple silhouettes of people, and then you would realise later down in the storyboard that it was a woman on her period. I I don't know <laughs> if that could be classed as a little bit absurd for something that's like yeah this is a monster. It's like oh, okay, but you you just don't get Harryhausen at this point. <laughs> it's just like. I mean, let, let alone like the animation side of things, but it's like, where where do you begin with this? It's like this is this is creature effects artist Ray Harryhausen, you know, it's a massive inspiration for cinema, and you want to do a effectively a strange tampon commercial. <laughs> oh, but then it also kind of showcased as well. Um, people's uh skill level as well which i haven't got a major problem with because everyone either has to start somewhere or is, is still kind of like finding their own feet but a lot of people were just kind of like um you know taking raise already existing creations and doing various shenanigans with them so it could have been something like they were going to uh, they were self-animating on a shelf or 
they were going to a dinner party or something like that. And that's fine. You know, that's not a problem. I, I think that um, everyone has to start somewhere when they're doing something as big as this. And, you know, given the, the person behind it, I mean, why wouldn't you want to kind of like showcase your favourite ray creature in your own personal way, which is fine. And it just didn't showcase the brief. The brief was to um, create your own monster and just effectively copying and pasting someone else's work is, is just, you know, it's not really... I mean that that's the professional side of me coming across. That's not the um the um the fanboy or anything like that. Um and then I submitted my design, which was the um the um Path Life on Mars concept, which was originally started in two thousand four, um being something like a, a TV series, kind of like a speculative evolution of Mars sort of thing. And uh, I had that shelved for years. And then someone said, you should submit that. And I thought, oh, I'll give it a try. And yeah, uh, as soon as the entries came in, uh, I think who was the, 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 Ray was one of the judges on it, but there was other judges as well. I think one of them was, um, I, I can't remember. It was, it was, at the time it was supposed to be Nick Park, but it turned out to be Nick Merlin crossing them on the day. So I don't know if Nick Park actually, selected the picture or not but either way you know me and Merlin are, are, are good friends and um, he seems to like the stuff that I've been doing and uh, and there was another guy I can't remember his name now for love no money but if you remember Huxley's Pig it's a stop motion animated series in the uh, 90s he was the one of the animators on that and I can't remember if he was the same guy or whether it was a different guy um but he did astro farm i have a feeling it might be the same guy did huxley's pig but yeah Ast he did astro farm as well and those were like two shows that i grew up with that were like it was really fun to, to kind of like talk with them and uh, get their insight on my design and what have you but yeah for, the, for those sort of people it's just like oh yeah this is clearly make and animate all this it's like no no it's no, <laughs> not gonna happen <laughs> oh it was so funny but yeah they they were the mem they're the memories that i i try to keep hold of as as often as i possibly can and they're the stuff that i don't want to um like go to sleep with <sighs> Uh, all right, so I need to continue. Yeah, so it's why like it's coming outwards from the gut this time. Uh, let's see. cheat a little bit here because unfortunately the body being curved over is a little bit not right but I don't think anyone's going to mind so much now I've always had it in my head these knees have like an actual cap on them but they don't so what I need to do is in fact he also doesn't have that bulge actually there I don't know where I've got that from Let's just iron that out. So I've got planned to do uh, the Talos and Ema. Well, where's the? Uh, I'll show you the, the photo cups actually. So for the Ema, he's going to be drinking a cup of coffee with his uh, blind saucer. So that's going to be, this was literally like a postage stamp sketch. So this has got a hell of a lot of filling out to, to get to. And then the other one was uh, Talos 
standing on myself. Was the uh, yeah. so that would be technical difficulties originally, but I'm going to cheat with this a little bit because although the the human version of myself is going to be underneath there. I wanted to make sure the foot was accurate to uh, to raise original design. So what I've done is I've printed out the original blueprint for Ray's uh, Talos stop motion puppet, and I've just drawn the outline. So I'll fill out all the details in the middle, get the shading right, and what have you, and then I'll just add myself down in the bottom. So at the end of the day, I'm only going to be focusing on this area of the foot i don't need all the rest of this but i wanted to make sure that i got the shape in there correctly so that uh, when you would uh, look at it you could you you know effectively looking at talos's foot um but apart from drawing the other thing i want to redo as well or revisit i should say is doing these again so making the paleo uh, mini bus but probably trying to make them as accurate as possible rather than just kind of like free handing it and also a full face rather than just one's half um and then the other thing i want to do which i don't know whether it would work or not because again this all depends on whether people can actually um uh tip or not is making the skull of the allosaurus from uh, wildlife and mars into an actual trophy. So the plan was is that I made this uh, stand, which was supposed to be like a museum type display but stand, so it would all connect up, something like this. There you go. Um, but I found that in order for me to actually make more of these, if uh, if I cast them, it's going to be too weighty, and then this might actually break. But also the, the people probably want them painted as well, so I'd have to invest into painting and everything. Whereas if I actually sculpt all this together. And make this into more like a, a rocky texture then at least then it will give an excuse for people that might might want to paint it um but a lot of these details that i put into this are actually going to get lost so uh, so the interior of the mouth is going to get lost um the flexibility of that jaw is going to get lost as well which is a real shame you know i'll put a lot of time and effort into it but at the same time this is kind of like the master copy so in the short film uh, for Wildlife and Mars, the, uh, the CGROV is going to find uh, and excavate, effectively, a fossilised skull of this in the dirt. So it's going to have the broken horn uh, from the initial combat that you're going to get to see in stop motion. Um, but yeah, it's just, it just needs to look a bit more kind of like fossilised and less like a, a fresh skull that you would find off a, a Predator trophy rack. But, um, but yeah, so they're the, they're the main i've got lined up but yeah if i can do the if i can get back into the paleo um, minibus things again then uh, then yeah i'd like to kind of like use that because as much as i'm enjoying doing the magnets at the moment that the problem start on a financial point is that the the doing this animation course has, has literally drained me dry so i have no funds in my account whatsoever i've got orders on the magnets um i think i've got like maybe 10 or 15 orders waiting to be and everyone's been really understanding about the, how I'm letting everyone else down. So once I've got those orders done, I'd rather go into making something that other people can work on. So people like, um, oh, I'm trying to think of uh, YouTubers now that in the Jurassic community that do painting. Uh, but yeah, they can buy these busts and paint them up themselves and make them like the Jurassic Park ones or um, you know just do their own free range stuff. But the, the end of the day, it's like I want to promote people's own creativity. So whether you're a novice or an expert, canvas to them. Um, and I think that's where my passion really lies when it comes to being a creative. I want to make stuff that people can then take and enhance further with their own creativeness. Um, and it's not just relying solely on me to um there's some, sometimes you get orders coming through and there's just so many of them and even when i was doing like the stuff for gaming beaver it's like i, I enjoyed doing them but there was just i over um, estimated how much time and effort a hundred toast magnets was going to do and uh, yeah it just it just drained me like crazy and I've still got maybe three or four orders of those to do. Um, and again, those 
those customers have been really, really patient. And I'm so grateful for that patience. But at the same time, it's like I'm on the, until I buy stable on my feet again. I just can't do anything else at the moment. Can't buy more paints, can't buy the postage, can't buy um, the particular resin that's the cheapest resin I can find as well to, to do the job. It just gets so timely. I just didn't anticipate that cost to just zap that much cash out of me, considering I saved up like a good like two grand, you know, and that's not even including like the your um uh, what was it now? Uh, student uh, student loan and everything. But you know, you live and learn. Let's just get these shaded in. Saying now, uh, uh, cool design ideas. Thank you very much, Taylor. <laughs> I thought you might enjoy him. Yeah, um, I am tempted on doing the whole. Lot. I mean, when I when you do it as a sketch, sometimes you kind of like underestimate how much space something will take up so i might end up doing the whole foot but then because my the caricature of me would be so small it's whether that foot would end up effectively overpowering this, the, the rest of the picture it's like this it's like guanji takes up majority of the picture whereas the caricature side of it actually um only takes up this small portion of it so it kind of balances it out all right but if guanji was to take up this portion and then you've only got me like carrying at the bottom down here it almost kind of like overshadows the whole thing of what it actually supposed to do so well i'll see how it goes you know it might end up going well it might end up going really really bad but we'll see um oh yeah if you put that if you put the alceratops skull in dino defenders extreme that would make my day you know if what makes me more happy than anything else is seeing people reference my designs as either inspiration or as this is cool it needs to be included in my work that yeah if you if you do that mate i'll be quite chuffed with that i really chuffed with that i end up like begging you for a copy of the episode <laughs> so i can have a, a hard copy on my computer And then when people say to me, oh, I remember seeing this. And like, Was it Dino Defenders by chance? <laughs> but yeah, the, um, the the Skull Trophy idea, um, I was, because I had um, uh, a GoFundMe during my, um, um, come on, Mike, words. Master's degree. There we go. Um, yeah, I'd um, a GoFundMe for people that wanted to help contribute to my travel costs to get into university. Because at the time, I worked it out that um, the stagecoach, the 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 bus, uh, had a student um, pass. So I thought, okay, well, as long as it takes so much, it'll be fine. But when I inquired at stagecoach uh, customer services, they said that they they don't have a student card that goes for adult students. You can only have it for if you're um, 18 or if you're under the age of 25. So I thought, okay, right, fine. I'll just pay the 70 pounds a month. So that's what the, the GoFundMe was going for. And a lot of people con contributed about a uh, thousand to make sure I got the full year's worth. But, you know, que sera, sera, as they say. Um, but anyway, yeah, at the end of my uh, final year, I, ha I just happened to say something to the driver um on this particular bus and i said something like you know i really kind of wish that um i could have got these student passes and he said why so well because i've got to save so much money with with um buying other materials and and um tools and what have you to do armature fabrication what have you 
You say, well, you could have applied for it. So I'd wasted two years worth of, of funding. So £70 a month for 12 months of the year to go on these uh, this bus service and go on this to do this course. And, um, and yeah, it was just like that one driver and all that, all that money that I was panicking about every single month of making, making sure I had at least 20 quid to pay for a, a bus fare was just wasted effectively. I was so annoyed. And when I tried to take it up with stagecoach, I said, well, we'd, we've always offered it and you should have known and this and the other. And again, it's like this down to, I'm, I'm, I'm positive I am on the autistic spectrum somewhere because I'm sure any other normal person would have thought to go check all these things. But for me, I just take everything at face value. If someone says they can or someone says that it doesn't exist or someone says other conflicting information, I don't always check it. And it annoys the crap out of me. It really does. These need to be... A little bit thinner, I think. Actually, they need to be more tapered as well, actually. It's not quite that um, obvious. But, um, mind. <laughs> if you want as well, Jack, I'll, um, I'll send you some photo... Uh, references as well for the skull so you can have like front side top down all the rest of it just so you get some uh, potential angles i would say i'd send it over to you but <laughs> can't afford the bloody post but yeah the um going back to the, the go for me thing anyway um yeah so the um so some of the people that donated like 100 pounds or so um maybe even like the, the i think it well no actually no 20, 20 pounds and up that's that's what i was looking at um i thought you know as a nice little thank you and because gofundme is literally a case of you know you just put your donation in and then that's the end of it you don't hear anything else from the um from the cause i thought i'll send it i'll ask for the addresses and i'll send about this little trophy so it's like and label it something as you know thank you for helping out on the ma because i can't dedicate it to the actual film because the, the the problem is is that the harry housing foundation are quite happy to accept my uh short film wildlife on mars as a donation to them but they can't accept something that's been publicly funded that's why i've not been able to do it through something like kickstarter or indiegogo because as much as people have said to me that they'd be quite willing to donate to something like that unfortunately that would then stop me from giving it to the Harryhausen Foundation, even as like a, a as a, a as donating it to the to the foundation itself, which it, I, I don't understand all the ins and outs of it myself. Um, it, even um, the people involved have been like, um, it's quite technical and and such to to go into, which I, from what he was trying to explain to me, was just about getting over my comprehension of, of understanding what he was talking about. So, uh, so yeah, so the, having them donate to my education was sort of like a, a loophole that I could get through because they're effectively not helping my film. The film is a byproduct of my course. So by doing the course, I get to make the film. It's just unfortunate this coronavirus has come in and stopped all production on it at the moment, which is really frustrating. It's like if anyone knows me as an animator, it's like you'll know how frustrating this is for me right now, as it is for everybody else. You know, I'm not, I'm nothing special. I'm not like it's, um, it's not like it's it's stopped me from living per se, but in terms of a, a maker, it's frustrating that in terms of stop motion you work in an isolated room you don't talk with anybody else because there's nobody else to be taking your concentration away and effectively that's exactly what the government are telling you to do but because it's within a university they have to think about their students which is fine um it's just pretty frustrating that it's effectively a main entrance that's stopping me from getting into my room to continue animating but 
I just don't know what this is going to do for me um, for now. Uh, the foundation have uh, postponed their centenary celebrations for the time being, uh, in terms of the exhibition anyway. Uh, but I don't know whether that, that means that they're going to try and do something in the year um, to do with the short film or whether they're going to um, save it for next year. I, I just don't know. It, there's, there's, it's like with everything else. There's just so much uncertainty about what's going to be happening with things. And, um, you know, I'd rather people be safe and um, cause more problems for people. we're saying uh, uh, <laughs> yeah very true <laughs> uh, you know what's actually what's a real shame actually jack is that um I didn't have the design of a skull already in existence for when you were doing the, um, I forgot the name of the, the blue dinosaur that you were working on now. Uh, yeah, the, the, it could have affected a skull amongst the boneyard that it had in its, uh, in its area, but never mind. I'm sure that the next place you have it hidden will be uh, just as interesting. Right, okay, now... Uh, let's get these legs done now. So that comes all the way down. Now I might just cheat a little with these legs because they it doesn't show anything specific in terms of our A scale, but it does show a connecting fold. So there's that. And it kind of like dissipates back up again. Um, one thing when it comes to um, puppets anyway, um, but if you were to really look at Guanji's feet, they're pretty much just, you know, you have toe and then it just ends in claw. It's like there's no kind of like padded area like you would expect with the... Um, Jurassic Park T-Rex, it's just kind of like, it's just one big claw. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and just do my own interpretation of it. Because at the end of the day, it's like, I know the difference, but I don't know how many other people know the difference. But I think if, if they can identify the, the head with Guanji, they, they should just more or less accept the overall image as Guanji and not be too uh, finicky about it. Um, i also got these, I can see. I've got these like stirrups at the back and right. bring up a little bit more there we go that looks quite nice and a happy little tree in the corner and let's sharpen the pencil again you know something um i'm not even sure if uh if I've already told you this or not, Jack, um, Michael has uh, admitted to me he's a fan of Wildlife on Mars. He messaged me on, well, I messaged him on Twitter about something. I can't remember what it was now. And then uh, he responded back. Um, oh, no, that was it. I was asking him about my, uh, for some advice. I was asking him that when it comes to trailer music for my composer, um, whether in his experience, he or that he was already working on or whether he composed a score specifically for the trailer and he said it's very rare that he ever does that he normally just takes something that's existing um and then further on in the um in the tweet he then said i i really enjoy seeing your posts especially about wildlife and mars it's really it's really good to see people carrying on ray's legacy and i kid you not i felt like i was on helium at that point <laughs> it's like i you know when you just kind of like you fantasize about people being fans of your work and it's like oh what if steven spielberg was a fan and what if peter jackson was a fan and you always just think it's a fantasy but then when someone can you know in that sort of like league of uh, pros can confirm to you they enjoy seeing your posts especially about stop motion and dinosaurs and shit it's like 
Oh yeah, it, it, it just gives you such a buzz. Hi. Okay, Oscar, thanks very much for stopping by and uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next one. But make sure you, if you're not already subscribed as well, make sure you subscribe. <laughs> Out of it. <laughs> but I will say, um, I don't know whether the Foundation have got a particular composer in mind for the Force of the Trojans uh, film that they'll be working on. Uh, so I don't know if uh, Michael would be in, I don't know how these things work, whether they the, the, the Foundation would approach a composer or whether it's like composers put in itself was like a score in itself but um yeah to have like someone like michael chikino because the one thing i like about chikino's work is that everything that he's scored so far that's followed on from a previous contract scores i feel jerry goldsmith in there when he did uh, jurassic world scores i feel john williams in there it doesn't just feel like it's you know michael chikino does x um score so yeah he's he'd be one of the ones i would love to see working on a harry harrison project um but yeah i don't think he'd, he'd do anything with this I, unless he just happens to do a note <laughs> i don't think he would but yeah it's uh i was such a villain finding that out i did read um reach out to him in a twitter message recently to see how he was doing but he's i don't think he's uh seen it uh, let's see. So now these are scales. These need to join up uh, just there, I think. How's this coming through? Yes, yeah, coming through okay. Now, because this is an underpour, actually, I need to um, trail that off. Let's clean up rubber time. <laughs> I'll give it a try. I'll give it a try. I mean, if he says no, I can't say uh, I didn't try then. All right. Um, speaking of uh, wildlife, Mars, I've asked um, Sick Triceratops to do the creature sounds for the Rex because everyone that I've approached so far about making these creature sounds. They've all kind of like fallen short of the bar. It's like, I want that retro uh, King Kong Rex slash um, the land that time forgot Allosaur Raw slash um, the Beast from 20,000 Fathoms Raw retroness to it. It's kind of like a deep throaty lion slash animal mix that isn't kind of like... Um, uh, like a you know generic dinosaur number five or a t-rex raw uh, from the modern from the modern era and uh, I, I wanted that like aesthetic that's very kind of like you hear it and it's like oh yeah that sounds retro sounds like it's from the 70s um because yeah everyone else is the, the, i mean one person uh basically just took like the t-rex raw reversed it and slowed it down it just sounded awful it was like i, I get you trying but it's like it's almost like it's, it's like a quick fix. It's like when it, when a video game or um, or a, a low budget TV program slash uh, sci fi channel um, horror movie does it. 
it's almost like you know that they're not trying. It's just kind of like, right, what can we get for the budget or what can we get for the time we will just stick in this sound effects CD and this will be fine. But with uh, when you're asking people to compose something that's more either natural or, or unique, they just don't seem to quite comprehend it. But um, I have faith that uh, Sick Trike will do justice for it. I mean, com considering the sort of stuff that he does on his channel as well, he does some good stuff. So I'm, I'm really happy that he's uh, willing to give it a try and, and see what he can do with it. And I'm eager to, to hear the results of it as well. So I would love to hear what he comes up with. Because that's one of the stories that Ray told me um, back in 20, uh, 2012. He was saying that uh, when the um, when he was designing his um, creature sound effects, the the, the, sound, the sound team would, would make a few examples and then they would play them to him. So he had the, the ultimate choice of what each of his creatures would sound like but he had no creative control in terms of what samples they would be playing for him. Um, and the majority of the samples that he, he was given, um, some made repeat appearances like um, the Ema in 20 mil miles to earth, the roar that it makes is the same roar as what the Cyclops makes. It's just slightly slowed down and a little bit deeper. And, uh, I'm pretty sure there's another sound effect that's that's carried over. I can't remember which one it is now. Um, I want to say it might be Trog, one of the roars that Trog does. But I can't remember. It's been that long since I've listened to any of them. It's, it's um, hard for me to remember. The thing that I'm interested in to see what Siki can come up with, if he can come up with a selection that he needs to sample them, I'm hoping I'll be able to make a decision because um, when you listen you, in your own head, you have this like the sound of these creatures in your in your own mindset for so long. Especially to, to me, you know, over ten years, I've had this particular sound in my head of what the the wreck should sound like. But even then, that's like changed over the the course of ten years. I mean, originally it was just it was pretty much just a roar, but now it's, uh, as I've further evolved the character. It's given it more of a, when it's in the main attack sort of uh, procedure, it, it, it's, the, it's the roars and the growls and the snarls. But during the more quieter moments, it's a chatter that it makes. So it emphasizes the fact that the creature's blind and it needs to send out sound in order to, to stalk and hunt prey. So the chatter in itself is quite sinister. And I, when the um, Indominus started doing it for Jurassic World, I just started panicking a little thinking, can I make something that sounds like this chatter, but not, you know, something that the people go, oh, it's just Indominus Raw. Um, but I, I found a good chatter. That I'm really happy with it. I think it was made by Black Bear. Um, I've had to, I've changed the uh, the source materials that ma that many times. I've forgotten which one was which, but it's uh, it's a good chatter. It's a really good chatter. <laughs> if he if he knocks out of the Jurassic Park, he should be uh, hired for the Jurassic World TV series. <laughs> oh God, yeah, Talos is like the original Jason Voorhees in my book. If it's not the slow movements, just the creaking and the grinding of, um, I want to say oh bronze, that was it. Yeah, uh, the bronze kind of like creaking and grinding together. I absolutely love it. And I will never, under, and I even said this with Ray, I will never understand how the critics at the time could say, oh, the animation of Talos is too jerky. It's like, he's a man of bronze. What do you expect for him to move like? He's not fluid. He's not a fish. <laughs> it's like you would expect it to be creaky and creaky and sort of like grind. I mean, have you tried opening a rusty gate? It's not easy. Never mind. So now we get to some decor again. Uh, I need to fill out these ones, don't I? Now, uh, 
I might do is I might just cheat a little bit. So just fill in the blanks. Not so much with like actual complete circles, but it's just kind of like um, the way I describe it is um, a series of close C's. It's hard for me to to quite describe it in a in a certain way. It's one of those sort of things you have to to kind of like get my um, my meaning. Because um, when it comes to um, scaling, you can spend forever, you know, drawing those in individual circles over and over and over again, and it gets very laborious. But with this method that I devised, it, it kind of tricks the eye that you're looking at actual smaller circles rather than um, individual circles, and it saves you time. You cover more ground than what you would normally do. And that needs to be another big one there, actually. In fact, uh, probably better off being a cluster. But it doesn't look right now because it looks like it's following the leg. So that's one thing. Anyone that's watching, I know it's a bit far gone into the drawing at this point, but anyone who's still watching that's new to drawing, um, my advice is not to start pressing down too hard until you get an overall picture of the final image. Though I'm quite hard on the eye in the pupil area, I know that's pretty much how the eye is going to look. So by um, putting more pressure to it, it makes the, the lead deeper and darker. And it's just um, darkening those out lines just yet. Is retune some of those uh, areas. That's just realized I'm not done is signature nostrils. There we go. Yeah, no problem, mate. You take care of yourself. Thanks for stopping by. It's uh, It's been nice to have some friendly faces in the chat. Catch my drift. <laughs> no, thanks very much, mate. And so, uh, considering it's only a single camera and not my multi-camera as I planned, it's, uh, I'm happy that people are getting some enjoyment out of it. So, thanks very much for that. Da -de -da -de -da. This is my song, my very own song. I can sing it, sure, I can sing it. Doobie doobie doobie. <laughs> right, so There we go. Now something that's not right.
I'm going to connect to chat, so will that mean that me connection's finally but giving up the ghost? No, we'll keep working. Tapers off, doesn't it? All right, okay. Well, it is what it is. Doesn't mean I can't add some of my own flair to it. And uh, add this up as well. Sorry about that, interfering with the camera. There are some times where I will have to get in quite close and personal, so you may find that I might end up bumping the camera a bit too much. Now, because that is a bunched up foot, I think what I'll do is I will overemphasize that bump. and raise that foot slightly. Take that bit up as well. And what this will do is add just a little bit more character in that foot posture. And then with these pads, we'll uh, just add a little bit more. In fact, is that a bit more?
right. Just do another post now and see if that makes a difference. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not coronavirus. Promise. Here we go. Two hours in and progression is coming along nicely. Pop in and have a chat. If my Wi Fi will allow it. There we go, and hashtag, uh, Harryhausen at 100, stay safe, stay Jurassic, Jurassic World, Jurassic Park, Dinosaur Retro. Tweet. There we go. Should be done. 
Right, uh, let's see if I can get my phone back out again because I don't think I'm going to need that illumination from the back anymore, which is good. I'm starting to actually get the overall flow of the form right now. So, thankfully, the uh, mixing paper element side of this isn't needed. And luckily enough, because I forgot this was actually corrugated, the, um, the lines from the board itself aren't showing through as uh, promptly as I thought they might be. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go grab a drink because I thought I had a drink with me. Uh, where's my bookmarks? There we go. Do, 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 do. Uh, I need a mark pen, preferably something black. Is there a mark for me? Mm -hmm. Ugh. Come on. There we go. Right, okay. Right. Just, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Damn you, mirrored bloody camera. Uh, right. How's that? Is that reading right? There we go. Jesus. Gulp. Ah, that's better. Oh, you don't realize how dry your throat gets when you talk for a while. Right, where was I? Uh, I was scaling the underbelly. Sort of has it coming down here as well. Hello, uh, typing away. I'm sorry I can't see anything at the moment, but if not, then hopefully my ramblings will make sense, which I'm sure they will to a point. <laughs> Unfortunately, the let's see, um, it's got quite dark sockets around the arms, so let's shade them up. And then they're quite not seduced, what's the word? The word in English are no good.
<laughs> See, if I had a good singing voice, I'd be uh, trying to entertain people with uh, lovely songs. Unfortunately, most of the songs that I know are from uh, animations in terms of like theme tunes and what have you. And then the other part of it is uh, I can't hold a tune in a bucket if I tried. But one can but try. Oh. Right, okay, so what do we need now? Um, we need more emphasis on that torso area. It's a bit too bland. So, oh, I know what it was. I know what it was. What was that? Collect these larger scales. But not do them in such a fashion that makes it look like they're just following the uh, body round. Because of the design of Guanji, he, although he has a large collection, it's thicker, bigger scales in his torso, they're, they're still quite sporadically placed compared to the small ones. Well, I'm hoping that I can do the uh, emphasis, the caricature, and I want to use the shadows as well to kind of like give the three dimensional form. Um, so it's not really a, a typical caricature. But hopefully it should be enough to kind of like bring the the, the character and personality out. Time down as well. Oh, six o'clock. I better start wrapping this up soon. Love me, uh, tea to get sorted. 
I'll we'll try and finish this neck off. I'll see how it looks. Now I might come back on later, or I might just leave it for tomorrow. I'm not one hundred percent sure yet. Um, I'm still in two minds as to what exactly to do with this image. Um, I might just leave it up for a uh, pencil and then photograph like I did with the uh, Harry House 100 logo. Or I might do um, pen and ink, but then if I do pen and ink, then I'm going to lose the shade. And so it's a question of whether I keep that, lose it. I'm, I'm just not sure yet. Um, I'll figure it out as I go along either way. I know it's not, uh, it's not all one or lost either way. Definitely need to emphasize those uh, lip scales a bit more, I think. And in fact, that needs to shade in. You didn't have a true ear per se, but I'm gonna just highlight it a little bit more than that. The scales are probably a bit too dark. I might close out and start again. Right, okay, so uh do, 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 do. I think I'm going to call it a day on this point so far. Um, I'll put out another post on Facebook and Twitter when I'm coming back this evening. Um, if, if you don't hear anything by, say, in the next hour or so, then assume that uh, I'm saving this for tomorrow. So thank you for joining me, everyone, today. Um, it's been some good conversation so far. I'm quite happy with the progress of this at the moment. Um, so, yeah, I shall see you shortly. Take care now.